Hello everyone, Nalabs here. If you're looking at the screen right now, you can see there's something a little bit different. The Godot sprite is actually moving around, and uh, thanks to Godot, to the Godot game engine, I was actually able to figure this out, and I'm really happy to share this one. This is like, I'm actually really proud of this project, and the way that I was able to figure out with two lines of code. But essentially what we could get to do is move around any object we want on the screen, thanks to the Godot game engine, and I'm actually going to show how this is possible. Okay, so... How do we get the Godot sprite to move around on the screen without having the annoying Godot um, background around us? Well, the way we did that was if we go to our project settings, why didn't that work? Anyway, if we go to our project settings and if we go to the window, I turned on borderless because if I didn't turn on borderless, we get really, really weird stuff, which is like we get some like snake type game, but it clears every time we look away, right? This is what happens if we get a border because it's still rendering this entire window and I can actually move it around like this. Anyway, that's really, really trippy. So I turned off, uh, I turned on a borderless window, which means there's n there's no like handles on it. Oh God, that's how I record. But anyway, there's no handles on it on the edges, right? So that's what borderless borderless means. And then I went over here and I was literally just playing around with Godot and I saw per pixel transparency. And I was like, what's that? And why is there allowed and enabled? And what I found is that you have to have both of these on to uh, make this work and then you also have to go to your ready function and you have to say get tree dot get root dot set transparent background equal to true and you have to say the os dot window per pixel transparency enabled which is just a, um, a property and you have also set that to true and if we have this true and we have nothing else working right this is the only two lines of code working and we run the scene what we get is a godot sprite just floating on the screen and what happens if we add a little bit of magic to that and by magic i mean a little bit of movement we can just say that every frame we want to make sure that we create a, a variable called velocity and we're going to set it equal to their um to a respective value which is going to be our input dot get action strength so the right me obviously means it's going to go input dot get action strength is actually uh, controller friendly uh like xbox or uh, ps3 controller logitech controller friendly and what happens is if we move rightwards we're going to get a value from 0 to 1, but if you're using the keyboard, it always returns a 0 to 1. If you use a controller, it will return a value from like 0, 0 0.5, 1, depending on the controller sensitivity. We're just going to be using input dog action strength. So if we click the right button, which is going to be if I go to my project settings and I go to my input map and I go scroll down, I can see that right is actually defined as W. Uh, sorry, uh, right is defined as D, left is A, up is W, right, S is down, and quit is escape, right? So we can see that if I click the right button, this is going to return one, and then the velocity dot x is going to return one, and we can just move it to the right. And the same idea holds true for the left, but instead we're going to get negative, a uh, negative value which actually moves leftward instead of right. So that's just the basic uh, controller over there. And instead of moving the sprite, we're going to be moving the OS dot window position, which is actually the entire window. So it's like moving this around, right? That, that's just my recording setup again. Anyway, so that's uh, how I made this little thing, and, and I'm going to be showcasing a couple applications I made over the next few days. And if you saw those itch.io trailers that I published uh, three videos in a day, those are actually what I made using this uh, uh, little function over here. So yeah, that's just interesting. I thought I would share how I made this. And you can see that I can't really click on anything here because the window is, I believe, 1024 pixels on the X value and the uh, 600 pixels uh, on the y value so you can see i can't click anything here but if i go around 300 pixels you can see i stop clicking yeah that's all i have to say and uh just one quick thing i forgot this if you're going to be using this make sure that your make sure that you have your background clear color to a color you want yeah default clear color let's see where it is it's actually going to be in the rendering and environment make sure you set your default clear color to something that you want because or something or a color that you would, wouldn't mind having as a background like black or white or whatever because that actually helps with Godot and it just makes the background that color so I'm guessing if you had a black sprite so let me just make a quick black sprite right it's saved over here we have the quick black sprite and I'm going to add it over here let's say if I run this you can see that hopefully we get yeah wait no we don't so that's just something to keep in mind and I'm just doing it's not a The, this video isn't a tutorial, this is just a showcase of a really cool function I found in Godot. And I really, really hope more people start sharing things like this because that's really interesting to have like just a floating smiley face or let's say this is an app I use a lot. I made this, right? Um, 
This is just a simple app I made, which just tells you how many seconds are left in the day. And you can see there's just some really cool things you can do with the Godot game engine and making apps. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for listening and watching to the end of this video. Have an amazing day.